Hi, it's Planky here, and I've got with me Doug Hauger, who is the General Manager of uh, Commercial Aspects of Windows Azure. Doug, I wonder if you could just give us a little bit of an overview on who you are and what it is you do. Great. No, I'm happy to. Thanks, Planky. So, yeah, as you said, I'm the General Manager for Windows Azure, uh, which, by the way, just to clear things up, we say Azure in the United States, Azure <laughs> here in the UK, yeah. and, you know, uh, different sort of ways to pronounce it worldwide, which is perfectly fine. People can say it the way they want. Uh, yeah, so I run the commercial business uh, for, for Windows Azure uh, out of our corporate headquarters in Redmond and uh, just here in London to see some customers and partners and, and uh, roll out some, some of the platform. Great, okay. And um, I've just you know, managed to catch Doug here. This, this isn't completely off the cuff. We did, um, we did arrange this. I knew he was going to be here and we've got sort of 15 minutes to just ask a few questions. So I thought I'd go for a few of the, you know, the, the slightly tougher questions, and uh, let's just see how Doug thinks thinks about these sort of things. So Doug, there's been a, a reasonable amount of comment on the internet about pricing for Windows Azure, um, and how it makes it untenable for like a small business or a hobbyist or, um, you know, perhaps like a developer who's just educating himself. Um, have we got any sort of plans around that? Anything that we can do? Anything that is going to make that easier for that small end of the market? Because it just seems a difficult space for us at the moment. Yeah, that's um, that's been uh, actually a good feedback that we've had. In fact, we had this site which you know about, and I think a, a lot of your your readers and viewers know about my great Windows Azure idea dot com. Yeah. And so at that site, we basically said to all of our users, we said, look, just tell us what your idea is. And a lot of the feedback that we got, in fact, um, the largest category of feedback was exactly what you're saying. It's kind of expensive if you're a hobbyist um, to yeah. go out and use it. And that's where Microsoft traditionally has been very strong, is that we provide our tool sets and we provide our technologies to these hobbyists and to entrepreneurs and startups um, to get started. There's a couple of things that we have done, and there's some things we're doing. And so uh, uh, some of the things that we have done, which many don't know about, is that if you're a startup and a member of BizSpark, uh, you can get access to the Windows Azure platform, actually, as part of that program yeah. for free. Yeah. If you're a subscriber to MSDN, you can actually get access to the Windows Azure platform as part of MSDN subscription. And so we haven't made it clear uh, to developers and hobbyists and startups that they actually have access today. Now, in addition, uh, coming up at the PDC, which we have on October 28th and 29th, we will talk about uh, some of the things that we're doing to really reduce the cost if you are actually buying it as well. And so you can kind of stay tuned to the, the, the PDC space, which this year is going to be streaming online as well as in person. And so people can get access to that messaging uh, at the end of October. That's great. Yeah. Okay, so you yeah. heard it here. Wait for Abs the PDC absolutely. and there'll, there'll be something for those, those guys. Yeah, and the strange thing is, by, like SQL as you you know, in the UK, a one gigabyte database, six quid a month. Yep. A uh, ten gigabyte database, sixty quid a month. It's a great deal. For yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. Uh, just completely the opposite way around. The yeah. the, uh, the amount of availability and scalability that you get there, the fact that you can scale that whole thing up to try and run that on in an on-premise environment at that kind of price is completely the opposite way around. Exactly, and I think that's a, you know you phrased it really well. Is that it's a, it's a great deal, and we think, I mean, my view is it really helps small businesses kind of punch above their weight, right? They can actually yeah. deliver yeah. enterprise services, enterprise class technology for a very reasonable price. Yeah. And, that's, and, and really, that is kind of the goal of the entire cloud, is that being able to provide, whether it's a database service, compute, storage, at a very reasonable cost with the reliability, the availability, that scalability that you get from cloud and help uh, customers be agile in, in doing it. Yeah, great. Okay, so that's good. Now, um, there's quite, I wouldn't say a lot, but there, if you if you want to go looking, you can find horror stories on the internet about developers who've signed up to Azure and they've ended up with huge credit card bills that they weren't expecting. And it's to do with the, um, the way that pricing works. You know, you're charged once you've created an instance whether or not your application is running. Right. Now I, I have noticed that you know there's lots of big red notices all over the place now when you know to, to warn you. Yeah. But are, are we doing anything in that area to uh, to cr try and sort of make that easier for the developer who's just getting to grips with this and doesn't quite know it yet and isn't expecting that kind of thing to happen? Yeah, there, there's a couple of things, and, and you're right um, in the sense that we we've had feedback, and I think there have been developers, uh, and, and more so than developers, it's really um, owners of a service who yeah. a developer might have developed, but someone else is running the service for them have said, look, we started this instance, yeah. and we're running a service, but we thought we shut it down, or we stopped it, and yet we're still getting billed for it. Yeah. And 
just to sort of give you the model there, you know, if you think if you go out and rent a car um, from a car rental company, if you rent the car just because you stop it and park it in a parking lot, you still have the car, it's still yours, yeah. and you're still paying for the rental of that car. And in many ways, it's a similar model that we have with Windows Azure, which is that you essentially have availability to that compute power, that instance. Yeah. And if you stop it, you're still essentially reserving that capacity for you. Yeah. Now, there's a couple of things we have done, because this is not a good situation necessarily for a customer that isn't expecting it. So we've put in place a, an email notification system that when you get within a certain point of your cap that you've set for your consumption, so yeah. when you get to 75% of consumption of your what you want to set as your limit, then uh, you get an email notification that you've reached that point. Oh, that's neat. Yeah, so yeah. that way yeah. you get notified of where you're at. At least you know the service is still running and I'm consuming resources yeah. and I'm going to get notified. So yeah. we've cleared that up. Um, in addition, moving forward, we will provide other ways for people to know that their services are running or to shut them down. And so that absolutely is feedback we've had um, and it's something that we're working on. That's good. So, yeah. Okay, great. Okay. Yeah. And then I've been talking to some IT pros recently, and um, I've got to say that there's a certain amount of nervousness among hmm. the community about, you know, if large amounts of compute go out to these public cloud providers, what's right. going to happen to them? You know, do their, do their skill set become redundant? What, is, what, what happens to these guys? What do they do in the future? Yeah, I've, I've heard that concern as well, uh, talking to IT pros and talking to, um, to IT departments within either enterprise customers or even in, in smaller service providers and, and folks like that. Yeah. I think there's a couple of things. There is no doubt that the role of the IT pro is evolving. Yeah. And yeah. It, it is evolving, I believe, actually in a good way in that IT pros can now become managers of valuable assets for their companies. In other words, not just looking at cutting costs and cost control and all of that, but instead figuring out how to take IT and make it a valuable asset for that business to generate more revenue. Um, and that truly is through cloud computing. Yeah. So being able to manage services that deliver end value to the company. In addition, and those things move out to a public service provider, you could say, well, then the job of the IT pro is gone. Yeah. Not really, because the fact is, is that most companies will have a need for private instantiations of cloud computing and public instantiations. The IT pro needs to manage how those things get deployed, uh, you know, scaled, monitored, either within their data center or in a public data center. So that role of the IT pro will continue to evolve, implementing private clouds on premises and implementing the management of the applications that are out in a public service provider. Yeah. So you, you I mean, what you're really saying there is that the the skill set is going to be, it's going to change really. Yeah. It's, absolutely. You know, it's not going to be. Swapping servers out and recabling things because that's you know that there will be still a degree of that. But There'll be a degree of that, but absolutely, it's going to evolve from beyond just simply plugging in, configuring, managing a server. Yeah. To thinking about this data center environment, but then also more important, thinking about the integration of public and private. Yeah. And that's an application administration management sort of uh, task. And integration as well. And the integration task is very important. Yeah. And companies will need that for a long time. It is yeah. not conceivable that everything will be in the public cloud uh, in the short term. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. That's great. Thanks yeah. for that. Absolutely. And um, just one final thought. You know, in Microsoft, we say, as far as the cloud is concerned, we're all in. Yeah. What does that actually mean to you? So, it uh, it, it means it means a couple of things. But more important, I think the most important is when we say we're all in. Every single piece of software that we're delivering today, we are building and architecting and delivering as a service. And in that way, giving the customers the choice to be able to go. But also to be really clear, whether they choose on-premises off, whether they choose with us, with a partner, or with themselves, we're all in on cloud. We are all in on delivering cloud and delivering the value of that cloud and cloud computing to our customers. Absolutely. Okay. Thanks very much for that. Doug. Absolutely. Thank great. you. And I'm Thanks for catching got, me. We've got the guys in the in the restaurant in the background there. <laughs> exactly. The eating their lunch. The chocolate shop down below. So yeah, <laughs> it looks great. Good to, good to be here in London. So thanks very much. Thanks for grabbing me. That's great. Okay. Thanks, Doug. Great.